Hey everyone, this is Pete, and with it being spooky season at the time of recording, it's time to look at a spooky game. Of course, there's nothing to say that you have to wait until Halloween to play a spooky game, but it's very much in the spirit of the season. And Boo Party, the game we're looking at today, was first released around Halloween in 2022, with its Nintendo Switch port enjoying a physical release, courtesy of Funbox Media and East Asia Soft, shortly before Halloween of 2023. Boo Party is the work of one Cosmi Kanke, whose previous game Crawl Code Block Knockers was a real pleasure. Drawing inspiration from naughty 90s arcade games such as Kaneko's Gal's Panic and Mitchell's Gone to the Diver, as well as a touch of Sega's rather more safe for work Pingo, Crawl Code Block Knockers is an absolute delight to play. It combines solid, challenging gameplay with a distinctive modern retro aesthetic, provocative pin-up style artwork which can optionally be switched off if you're not in the presence of people who might appreciate nudie pictures, and an absolutely banging, synth-heavy soundtrack from musician, composer and producer, Opus Science Collective. Boo Party once again sees Cosmic Kanke and Opus Science Collective teaming up for a project that is a solid game first and foremost, and a means of delivering saucy imagery to the player as a secondary consideration. This time around though, it's a rather different sort of game, eschewing the arcade style of Crawl Code Block Knockers in favour of a more adventure game style. Your task in Boo Party is simple. At the behest of a paranormal scientist, you must enter a spooky old mansion and take photographs of the various spooks that lie within. It soon becomes apparent that this is no Project Zero however, in short order, you discover that you've showed up at the mansion just in time for a party that comes around once every century, as the barrier between our world and the next is at its thinnest. This of course presents an ideal opportunity to get up close and personal with a variety of lovely monster girls and snap some rather candid shots of them. When queried by the community, Cosmic Kanke didn't quite recall whether or not they drew inspiration from IRM's obscure photography-themed PC Engine title Gekisha Boy, but does admit that the protagonist for Boo Party bears a certain resemblance, and notes, if it was coincidence, I did not steer away from it when I realised what I'd done. Instead, Boo Party is specifically intended to be an homage to 70s style retro cartoons, as well as the 2018 Studio Gamai game for PC Photo Flash, itself a modern take on the foul-mouthed, naughty and almost certainly copyright infringing mid-2000s Flash games in the Frank's Adventure series. At the outset of Boo Party, your first task is to gain entrance to the mansion itself. This is a simple task that sets you up nicely for what you'll be doing for the majority of the game, completing tasks for various characters, usually by locating items for them. In this instance, all you have to do is find an invitation to the party that a ghost has dropped outside the mansion, which causes them to invite you along as their plus one, and from there, things get underway. The overall map of the mansion in Boo Party is vast, but so as not to completely overwhelm the player from the outset, your access to other areas is fairly limited to begin with. Once again, this is effectively a means of the game teaching you the things you need to know in order to succeed over the long term. You'll meet one of your potential models in the form of a busty vampire lady, be given a task by her, and have to complete this before the full map unlocks. It becomes clear right from the outset that Boo Party is not intended to be a horror game in the traditional sense. If it wasn't already apparent from the joyously infectious music, the dancing ghosts and cheerful dialogue, which, while unmistakably 2022 in tone, often pokes fun at the more ridiculous vernacular used by younger folks, make it obvious that Boo Party is instead playing down the scary side of Halloween in favour of the sexy party angle. You'll quickly be drawn into the game's atmosphere. Boo Party does a great job at capturing the essence of a somewhat chaotic house party, with attendees scattering to all corners of the building, all having fun in their own way. Some are happy to just hang out in a corner and people watch. Some love to dance. Some want to meet new friends. Others are there for the organised entertainment. Each and every one is an absolute joy to get to know during your time at the mansion, even though only a few of them are directly relevant to your overall quest. One of the nice things about Boo Party's overall design 
is that it's non-linear in nature. But at the same time, the various threads you're required to pull at over the course of the game as a whole are somewhat intertwined, and you'll often stumble across things you need to progress in other characters' tasks while pursuing one specifically. It never feels like you have a laundry list of things to do, however. Working your way through the game feels natural, as if you're simply doing things on a whim as they come up, rather than systematically working through a quest log. This is helped along somewhat by the game's deliberate lack of both a map and an objective list. Had these features been included, doubtless the game would be much easier to complete, but it would also feel far less organic in terms of how you progress. Instead, what we have is a game where, much like at a real house party, you wander around from room to room, engaging with people and events that seem interesting as you see fit. There are a few gates to progression here and there, usually implemented through a system known as spirit points. Each photograph you take and return to your scientist companion rewards you with these points, which can be expended in various places around the game to unlock new routes or acquire various items. There are still plenty of options available to you at any given moment though. There's no one set way to complete the game, and indeed a time trial mode that unlocks after beating the game once encourages you to find the most efficient sequence of events and beat it as quickly as possible, so to speak. On your first playthrough though, you'll want to take your time, because there's a lot to see and do. Not all of it essential to complete the game. In fact, some of the game's funniest moments come in the completely optional scenes, such as one where you sit down on a toilet to have a think for a little while, and are suddenly struck with one of the dirtiest thoughts imaginable, one which marks you for life, and which in turn allows you to bond with a fellow pervert in the swimming pool changing rooms, who then reveals his secret peephole into the ladies' showers. And it's not just about wandering around talking to people either. At various points in the game, there are arcade-style sequences that you'll need to complete in order to progress. While most of Boo Party is fairly laid-back and casual, you'll need to bring your A-game for these challenges, because they can be quite demanding. You do actually have options to make them easier, or skip them entirely if you really don't get along with them, a feature which Cosmic Kanke added post-launch on PC after some players complained that they were too hard, and which was incorporated from the outset on the Switch port. But it's worth engaging with them at least a bit, because while they're difficult, they're also fun. One of the minigames involves working out alongside Frankie, the cute girl version of Frankenstein's monster. Because she's a total gym rat, you need to dose yourself up on energy drink before you can even think about playing with her. And of course, acquiring said energy drink is a mission in itself. But once you're suitably caffeinated, the workout begins. What follows is a delightful homage to WarioWare, in which you have to complete a series of short micro-games, mostly themed around exercise in some way. You'll have to help Frankie perform leg lifts with careful timing, make sure both you and Frankie jump over obstacles while running along the track, ensure you keep your balance while lifting a heavy weight, avoid getting stomped on while racing around collecting cherries, spar with Frankie without getting punched in the bollocks by remembering the sequence of strikes she announces to you before performing them, and crush various roots between Frankie's formidable thighs. In true WarioWare style, the pace and difficulty of these micro-games increases gradually as you successfully clear them, and you'll have to beat 12 of them without losing all your lives in order to sufficiently impress Frankie so that she allows you to take a photograph of her. Elsewhere in the game, your quest to recover the missing magical mermaid panties, which allow the mermaids to switch between fishy and humanoid form, sees you floating down a sewer on an inner tube in an amusing homage to Atari Games' classic arcade game, Tubin. Simply completing this sequence is relatively straightforward, but matters are complicated somewhat by the presence of collectible gems along the way. If you nab a hundred or more of these out of the 126 available, you get a special prize at the end, which can lead to an optional naughty picture to add to your collection. And since the entire point of the game is collecting naughty pictures, why wouldn't you want to do that? Probably the most substantial minigame is known as Succubounce, and is an in-game arcade machine that is essentially a competitive take on mobile gaming classic Doodle Jump. As one of four succubi, it's your job to bounce up a sequence of platforms while attempting to knock your opponent off the bottom of the screen five times. You'll need to successfully accomplish this three times as part of the main story as you compete against three obnoxious skeletal children, 
and if you fancy an additional challenge, there's also a full single player mode to take on too. To give you an idea of how well fleshed out Sucky Bounce is, a full third of Boo Party's soundtrack is devoted to tracks that you only hear while playing Sucky Bounce. And once you've beaten the main game, you can even play Sucky Bounce by itself, either solo or against a friend. While it's one of the more frustrating sequences to beat as part of the main story, there's no doubt it's fun. You'll find yourself feeding credit after credit into it, just like you would have done back when playing Street Fighter 2 on the Super NES and wanting desperately to see that ending you hadn't reached yet. As is probably apparent from the soundtrack and beautiful pixel art, Boo Party is full of nostalgia for the good old days of gaming, and nowhere is this more apparent than in the dancing minigame, which occurs twice during the main story, once while you're still pursuing the photographs, and again as the game's overall finale. Building on an earlier, easily missed appearance of the Dreamcast logo and its slogan, It's Thinking, as graffiti on a wall, the dancing minigame is a very obvious direct homage to Sega's Space Channel 5. The alien girls you're dancing against bear more than a passing resemblance to some of the Merolians from that game, and the emphasis on listening rather than focusing on visual cues makes this sequence's intentions abundantly clear. Though it is worth noting that by acquiring a particular item and speaking to a certain character, you can add on-screen visual cues to make things a little easier for yourself. Boo Party is an absolute pleasure to play, and it's a delight as always to see it reach a wider audience through a physical Switch release. Much like Funbox Media and East Asia Soft's previous physical releases of saucy games such as the Pretty Girls series, the physical Switch version includes more explicit artwork than that which was available in the original digitally downloadable versions. Though it's worth noting that much like Crawl Code Block Knockers, the nudie art in this is more pin-up in style than particularly explicit porn. With the one exception being an optional image of your scientist friend gleefully being taken roughly from behind by a ghost who was sad he didn't lose his virginity before he died. And yes, it is a reference to that one scene from Ghostbusters. So as Halloween rolls around once again, if you're in the mood for some silly sexy fun rather than spooky scary gore fests, I encourage you to give Boo Party a shot for yourself. It's a few hours well spent and significantly less chance of a hangover the following morning than a real party. And so it just remains for me to say, as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time.